Greetings, brave travelers, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are in the midst of a four-part series about all of the upcoming class changes in TBC Prepatch. If you haven't seen my last video on the Priest, Mage, and Warlock, I'll have a super convenient link on screen for you to shimmy on over and check it out. This has been a mighty adventure, and it wouldn't be a thought worth pursuing if it wasn't for all of you out there supporting me and keeping me motivated to share my longtime knowledge and gaming experience with all of you. If you're new here, please make sure you bombard the like button with compliments about how wonderful it is, and just when it gains your trust, place your trap card and watch it panic with admiration of your deceptive skills. There are quite a few nuanced changes within our two classes today the Rogue, and the Druid. So buckle up and enjoy the ride as I take you for a bit of a journey through Blizzard's blatant madness. We're going to start off with our super toxic open world hate magnet, the Rogue. First, we'll start off with Assassination. The improved Slice and Dice is removed and swapped for Puncturing Wounds. This increases the critical strike chance of your backstab ability by 30% and adds a 15% increased critical strike chance for your mutilate ability and lethality. This adds mutilate and shiv to the tooltip. But frankly, there's not a lot of talent changes for assassination, and we immediately move on to our what's new category. We have quick recovery, very nice if you get dodged, parried, or you miss, fleet footed, master poisoner, dead in nerves, and mutilate. Moving over to combat, we have improved backstab, replaced by improved slice and dice, which we just talked about from the assassination tree. Weapon expertise, the tooltip changed from increases your skill with sword, fist, and dagger weapons by five to increases your expertise by 10. And in the what's new category for combat rogues, we have blade twisting, vitality, nerves of steel, combat potency, and surprise attack. Our last two are major DPS increases for our lovely combat friends in PvE. On now to the PvP fun time spec. There were a lot of optimizations and changes in this spec. The talent opportunity adds mutilate to the tooltip. Elusiveness moved down to row four and swapped with improved sap. Improved Sap, which in Classic gives you a 90% chance to return to stealth after using Sap. Change to Dirty Tricks, which increases the range of your Blind and Sap abilities by 5 yards, and the energy cost of both is reduced by 50%. The reason for this change was because Sap was made an ability that doesn't break stealth anymore. Hemorrhage changed from Classic to TBC. It went from being basically just a weapon damage swing with 30 charges of a debuff that increased physical damage dealt to the target, now swapped to 110% weapon damage, increasing physical damage done by more and reducing the stacks to 10. Our talent Dirty Deeds reduces the energy cost of your Cheap Shot and Garrote by 10 in Classic. This adds your special abilities cause 20% more damage against targets below 35% health basically just giving them an execute for almost no reason and making that last 35% of your HP bar much scarier to be in when there's a rogue present. The preparation tooltip changed to a list of specific abilities. Evasion, Sprint, Vanish, Cold Blood, Adrenaline Rush, and Premeditation. Note, the big ones not on this list include Cloak of Shadows and Blind. What's new for the subtly rogue? Master of Subtlety, Cheat Death, Enveloping Shadows, Sinister Calling, and Shadow Step. As I mentioned before, subrogues really shine in PvP environments, especially with the new added talents that seemed like all Blizzard wanted to do was make them the most annoying melee class in the game possible. Let's move on to our spells and ability changes for all of the rogue. Blind has been changed from a poison effect to a physical debuff. The cooldown has been reduced from 5 minutes to 3 minutes. This ability no longer has a material cost as it is no longer considered a poison. And PvP trinkets now apply to many more things, including blind. Grote adds a 3 second silence to the tooltip. 
and evasion now includes physical ranged attacks as well as melee attacks in its dodge chance increase. And now on to Kitty Sprinkles McGee, the Druid. Starting with balance, there are quite a few revamps and changes here, so be patient and take notes if these pertain to you. Improved Wrath changed to Starlight Wrath. This sees the same reduction in Wrath cast speed, but also reduces Starfire cast speed by 0.5 seconds. Improved Moonfire, same max value, but changed to two points from five. Natural Shapeshifter moved to the Resto Tree. Natural Weapons was removed from this tree. Omen of Clarity removed and also added to the Resto Tree. We have Control Nature, which adds Cyclone to the tooltip. We have Focus Starlight, which is a new talent very early on in our tree, which increases the crit chance of Wrath and Starfire by 4%. Nature's Reach tooltip changed. This now reads all balance spells and adds Fairy Fire Feral ability. Insect Swarm moved here from the Resto Tree. Improved Starfire was changed to Celestial Focus. The cast time reduction to Starfire was added to the Starlight Wrath talent we discussed earlier. And in the Celestial Focus talent, the 15% chance to stun remains and reduces the chance for you to be interrupted while casting Wrath by 70%. Also, it dropped from 5 talent points necessary to 3 talent points. We have some substantial changes to Moonkin form, and I'll read them here. Item armor contribution buffed to 400%. It also added melee attack power increase by 150% of your level. Spell crit increased to you and your party members by 5%, up from 3%. And attacking with melee will regen mana based on attack power. This is only really useful when um in PvP, especially if you're being mana burned. What's new for the Balanced Druid? Well, aside from the fact that they got a giant facelift and became a very viable caster in TBC, our new talents are Lunar Guidance, Balance of Power, Improved Fairy Fire, Dream State, Wrath of Scenarius, and Force of Nature. Let's move on now to Feral. We see a couple of changes immediately to the point values for a few talents. Thick Hide was reduced from 5 points down to 3 points. Feral Instinct reduced from 5 points down to 3 points as well. Onto Primal Fury and Blood Frenzy from Classic, they were combined now into just one talent called Primal Fury. Improved Shred changed to Shredding Attacks. The energy cost reduction increased to 18 from 12 and adds a reduction to the cost of your Lacerate ability. Savage Fury, Maul and Swipe were removed and replaced with Mangle Cat ability. Art of the Wild, Strength increased for Cat Form, reduced from 20% to 10%. Leader of the Pack increased to 5% was 3%. And what's new for our Feral Friends? Nurturing Instinct, Survival of the Fittest, Improved Leader of the Pack, Primal Tenacity, Predatory Instincts, and Mangle. Let's talk about our sprinkly friends, the Resto Druid. Improved Enrage was removed. Natural Shapeshifter from Balance Tree moved to its place in the Talent Tree. Improved Healing Touch changed to Naturalist. Same healing touch cast reduction, and now also increases the damage you deal with physical attacks in all forms by 10%. Reflection changed to Intensity. Mana regen while casting was increased from 15% to 30%, and instantly generates 10 rage when you use the Enrage ability. This was adopted from the improved Enrage talent. And the Subtlety talent adds a 30% reduction in chance for your spells to be dispelled. What's new for our Resto Druids? Empowered Touch, Living Spirit, Natural Perfection, Empowered Rejuvenation, and Tree of Life. Our spell changes for the Druid. Barkskin is now usable while stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep. Demoralizing Roar, attack power reductions increased or rounded up at all ranks, which I will have on screen. Enrage removed, the Druid is considered in combat for the duration effect from this ability. Hurricane's one minute cooldown removed. However, they did apply the AoE cap to this spell. 
Ravage percent damage increased from 350 up to 385. Regrowth mana cost reduced quite substantially at all ranks. Swipe adds attack power scaling to its base damage. And Tranquility's mana cost and healing done both increased significantly, which I will also have on screen. What I didn't talk about specifically with the rogues was that when you tab target and don't apply combo points to that target, if you tab back to the last target that you had that you were gaining combo points on, those combo points will still be there. This is the case for both rogues and feral druids. It was not the case in classic, if you weren't aware. Thank you for sticking around through the grand journey of thievery, deception, and tree hugging. If you found any of this information helpful to you in any way, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to catch the next update on this series. Our wonderful plate friends, the Paladin and the Warrior are up next. Also, I just started a new weekly series to be released alongside these informational videos devoted to Twitch and community highlights called The Weekly Lulls, if you're in for a bit of comic relief after I bored you nearly to death with all these minute details. Until next time, my friends, farewell.